Good morning, everybody. It's Rich and Katie. Rivers, Rich's River Smokers, West Virginia. But today, obviously, you know that we are River Smokers, West Virginia barbecue team today. We are heading four hours south to Whitesville, Virginia, to compete in our, what I'm going to call is supposed to be our last competition of the season for KCBS. Um, so we're going to try to do a little better on this video. Uh, we're going to meet up with some uh, friends you've seen uh, on my channel before, uh, Mr. Scott Sinet. Um, Mr. Scott Sinene, as the family uh, calls him, from North North Smoke, South Meats, uh, Backyard Team. And we're going to catch up with Mr. Steve Dotson of Cookout Coach. Check out his channel. I'll leave it right here, up here somewhere where my thumb can't reach. And um, then the link. And also, since he's from West Virginia, lost, lost in the middle of nowhere Creek, West Virginia, and Mr. Steve Dotson is going to be down there. And we are trying to catch Mr. Travis Murphy from Martinsburg, which is just south of us by um, the Hogs Jump, is um, right in front of us, about four miles. I'm hoping to catch him. Um, but these guys, uh, they're also a backyard team called Gold and Blue, Blue and Gold, Gold and Blue. At least Blue and Gold, Blue and Gold uh, competition team barbecue. So. Uh, Is it West Virginia Mountaineers? Yeah, as in, yeah, because I guess he's a Mountaineer fan, poor, poor guy. And um, so we're going to do our best to get you a video of just about everything we do. So we're going to try. You know how hard it is. So we'll see you in Whitesville. All right, guys, we are set up right there. But there's a generator over there, and that thing's loud as hell. So, you know, there we are. We're set up. There's a bunch of teams. There's Wolf Revenge right there. Old Dominion Q. Um, we got badass mules here. 270 smokers. Terry and Stephanie right here. I don't know who that is, but we got a bunch of bunch of good teams here. There's some backyard over there. We got Chris Lemon, and we got Travis Murphy. You heard us talk about him earlier on. So. Stick with these, we'll get some more footage. There's another person here that you gotta catch up with. Finally, the season is over. And I say finally because of these results right here. I thought that the last competition <laughs> was rough, but we opted out of the BBQ and C for Delaware and went to a brand new competition called Zombie Q in Wytheville, Virginia. Now, you know, there was a couple highlights to the trip, this not being one of them after we had the papers. Um, but we did get to catch up with a lot of our friends. Um, well, I say a lot of our friends because, well, you know, they're our friends. There was YouTube subscribers YouTube channel, and we're going to go ahead and get it out of the way, as I want to give a big, huge shout out to Scott Sinet, aka Sinene, for comping me and Miss Katie a room in the hotel he works at in, what the hell town is that? Uh, Hillsville. Yeah, it's not Hillsville, Pen uh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> it's either Hill I thought it was Hillsborough. Hillsville. Oh, okay. Hillsville, remember I said I called it Hillsville? Oh, yeah. It was about 20 minutes down away from the competition down to 77 South. If you guys are familiar with the area, it's mountainous. And it, boy, did it rain its ass off. So, we traveled just about five hours down the road. And, you know, it was a great time. Anyway, Scott Sinet, <laughs> he uh, comped uh, me and Miss Katie a room in the family for the weekend. Thank you very much, brother. He's a very a long time channel supporter, subscriber. And not only has he that, he's a, turned out to be a pretty damn good friend. And we talk a lot on the phone and via text. And, you know, just a real good guy. Him and his wife, she's such a sweetheart. She made, oh, shit. Um, do you have a picture of that? 
that send me a picture of that wreath and I'll put it in. Oh, okay. You should have a, I thought I sent it to you. I might have to look. But anyway, I'll put that right here. The wreath that Miss, uh, Miss Sinet, uh, yeah, Sinet made this. Um, I can't remember her name. Is this Sandy? Amy. Amy. Amy, there it is. That, uh, Scott's wife, Amy, made. It's just hanging up, isn't it? Just hanging up? Yeah, it's just hanging up. Never mind the TV. Miss Katie's on a Hallmark kick. Oh, for love of God. How's it hung up? With the pen through the center of it. Oh, oh one of those. Yeah, just a thumbtack. All right, Miss Sinet and Amy, oh shit, I <laughs> dropped that, well, made well, us well. one of these, it was a surprise, we was, uh, it was comp day, um, no, actually was it prep night? Yeah, it was prep night, it was Friday night, I think it was, and she brought us one, yeah, it was Friday, we took back to the hotel, Yeah. she she made us this, you know, with some hand tied, you know, stuff on the back. Very nice idea. Very cool. It's a very cool idea, and um, we thank you, Amy, and uh, you know for for that. And then it was cool. I, I thought it was pretty awesome. Um, that <clears throat> we saw them. Um, we saw Steve Dotson of uh, Cookout Coach, one of my buddies and friends, a YouTube guys. I'll leave his link to his channel up here. Go check him out. Got a bunch of nice videos. Probably slightly better than mine. He takes a little more detail and does his stuff. But real nice guy. I didn't get no footage of anybody. Um, just, you know, pretty much enjoying the weekend and hoping for the best. We also ran into um, a subscriber which is a, it's a backyard team. This is, that's what, you know, cookout coach Steve Dotson, he's a backyard team. We also um, have a guy, um, Golden Blue Barbecue. Um, his name is uh, Travis Murphy from Martinsburg. He's right down the street from us. A hell of a nice guy. He, you know, he got his family with him and just out there having fun, you know, um, and um, so Sinet, Scott Sinet, was he's a backyard team, and those guys killed it. I mean, they they killed it. They pretty much, you know, did good, and they rocked it. And I'm very proud of them guys for sticking with it and doing the stuff they do. And we also ran into a guy that we met <laughs> up in almost heaven in 2017 when we were backyard. His name's Chris Lemon, and he has. Um, I'll go ahead and plug him. I wish I'd have followed this shit before I started talking. Yeah, what happened? Okay, Chris Lemon. <clears throat> He's from Charleston, West Virginia. Oh, we're talking about trouble. Yeah, Katie, Katie calls him trouble. He's a real nice guy, man. I mean, he's all these guys are awesome. This guy here is one of a kind. I mean, one of a kind. He's from Charleston, West Virginia, and every time, anytime you're in Charleston, he owns a restaurant called Lem's. Lem's Meat Varnish, I think, or Lem's Restaurant. You can look him up. But he has his own sauce called Lem's Meat Varnish, right here. Sweet with a little heat barbecue sauce. Now, we tried this when we got back from the competition and <laughs> it's pretty good stuff. Um, I was actually surprised. Um, he, uh, used this on, I think his chicken and his ribs. It's his comp sauce and he does good. He, it's award winning. Whatever, we won an award. I don't know, but you can get it from, if you want it, hit him up at lems meat varnish at yahoo.com. Proudly made in West Virginia. 
You can find him on Facebook at Lem's Meat Varnish. Go look him up. Um, I don't know what he charges. I got this at a family discount of free. Um, so, real nice guy. Um, look him up and buy some of his barbecue sauce off of him. You can't go wrong with it. It's got, when it's raw, it's sweet with a little bit of, a little bit of heat. And once you cook with it, it pretty much goes sweet. It doesn't really have much of a bite to me. And Katie loves it. So, so not much stuff that, not much barbecue sauce that she likes. But that was one of them. Yeah, I really like that. Trouble did good. Yeah, he's a good dude, man. Smart, uh, support your, you know, your small businessman, Chris Lemon, at Lem's Meat Varnish. Hit him up. Okay, and then there's... You know, numerous pro teams at Child's Cridlin with Wolf's Revenge and Teresa Bell at Big Dog Barbecue and, um, shit, a new team that, that did their first pro comp there was Ribbon One Out. I don't know the dude's name. Um, let's see, other people that follow me, TNT Explosive Barbecue, um, I tell you, man, you find them every every everywhere you go. You find people that follows you on YouTube or seen you on Facebook, and of course, uh, Wilbur the the Gap Tooth Pig, our team logo. Once you see it, you don't forget it. So people have really uh, they're they're throwing the cat toys like they're grenades. And they yell at them. Just... What do you think? You want them to yell at them? They're having fun. They're not interrupting, are they? Yeah, they're cat toys. I mean, for fuck's sake. When you're a kid, you find anything is a toy and it can be used for anything. The junk they got. Anyway. Cat toys and boxes will entertain them more. Like the dog, easily amused. Mm -hmm. So let's get down to business. We had one of the worst. This is the worst. Either judging or the worst. I thought we had a good cook. Brisket was tender. Ribs were tender. Chicken um, fought us again because the drum got a little cool. And we, anyway, the drum got cool and the chicken was fighting us. And we, it was a rush to get chicken in. After the chicken was gone, everything turned out good. Um, we did some different stuff. We used uh, different injections. We used. You know, I said, what the hell? It can't be no worse or whatever. So we used, um, you'll see me use this again on a review channel, a review as you've seen her on um, Barbecue Pitmasters, Lene Oxley. I acquired a um, rub, a uh, packet, rub of her pork packet, it's <laughs> her pork rub called um, Pork Holler or something like that. You'll see me review it later on in the winter. Um, Lene's actually, you know, we talk on Facebook and, you know, she's pretty cool, man. I mean, you know, she's small business up in Oregon. Um, and she's, she'll talk to you, you know, just cause she's on TV, you know, she's on TV and she wasn't, she's not stuck up or nothing, but we're going to try her sauce and her rub. And so I only had her rub and I acquired it from one of her sponsors, Smoke Craft Barbecue. Shout out to Drew and Old Red there at Smoke Craft. He, they're up there too. Um, real, real good friend of ours. I mean, they turn out to be really. Every time you come, you just gotta be next to them and and just real nice guys. I mean, just real nice people. Um, so that's where it's at. So we'll cut to the chase. I am not a proud. I tell you, I've read some shitty scores over the season, but I am not proud of this. One bit, so I'm swallowing a lot of pride to read this one to you guys. And there is only 20 teams, pro teams. Keep that in mind as we go through the results. 20 pro teams, and here we go. Did you hear that? It's gonna be a good one. Okay. You've always heard me be very critical of the judges. This will probably be like nothing you ever heard. All right. Now, <clears throat> chicken was bite through skin, mind you. 
and we don't trim the skin anymore. We acquired, we took a barbecue class and we knew how to get bite through skin without trimming fat. And I don't have fatty chicken thighs. Out of 20 teams, we finished 19th place in chicken. With a 977, 977, <coughs> 889, <coughs> 877, 877. Now here's where it gets interesting. A 989 and a 977. I'm telling you, forgive me if you're a KCPS judge and you follow me. You may unfollow me after you hear this, but these are some stupid fucking judges. I hate to be critical, but I have seen some inconsistent scoring. And what I'm about to read to you, the rest of these scores, you're gonna you're gonna flip your mind. This is another reason we are taking probably a different route next year until the KCBS gets their shit together. And yes, I will hashtag KCBS. I might even send this video to them in their email because this is the worst competition as far as judging that I've seen. And I wasn't the only team bitching. So, with that being said, we have a chicken comment. 88877, it was chewy, big, fatty piece. Now, Miss Katie can tell you when I trim my chicken, there is no big, fatty pieces. None whatsoever. And I mean none. The only fat on the whole chicken thigh would be the skin, and we've rendered that stuff out to where it is nice and heavenly chewy. Um, not chewy, but heavenly melt in your mouth. Have a ninth, ma ninth mouth feel. Okay. Now, 153.6456. And that is 13 to 15 points below our chicken average for the season. I don't know. I have a team. I'm not going to mention their names, but we were sharing some information with a couple other teams. And the judge made a comment on his that the second bite was fatty. Now, I mean, I'm under the impression when you are a judge, you take one bite and then you judge it on one bite. You don't sit there and eat the whole chicken thigh and then say, okay, well, one side was nice and the other side was fatty. So I don't understand exactly. And I talked to some judges, I'm not going to mention anybody's names, that are certified judges and said that could be very wrong. So we are already skeptical of what's going down, and I am not happy at this point. Um, pork ribs, I thought we had the best pork rib cook. Um, well, let's get, all right, all right, all right. Here's, back to chicken. There's some of the judges. The judges average are 32, 34, 31, 30, 34, 33. Every judge on chicken judged us down on their average at least two points. My chicken has been the same. Chicken has done well, not, not award winning, hardly, but we at least had three top 10 calls in chicken and hold a 165 average. So nothing was wrong with my chicken in my eyes. Same chicken all season. Even though we battled us a little bit, the cooker died on us a little bit, but we opened that bitch up to 400 degrees. What? I did. While oh, you and her scolding the kids. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> so the judge took two bites. Miss Katie was here. You're a dumbass. Sorry. Not really, but you're a dumbass. No, it's sorry, not sorry. Yeah. What she said. So <clears throat> the pork ribs... I'm telling you, these are some of the most tender, not fall apart, right on the right where they should have been. And we strived all season to get these ribs to where they was, and I was so comfortable with them. The cook went so good. I mean, other than chicken kind of fighting us a little bit, we got it up there at 400 degrees on the drum. We we got her so done. I wasn't serving raw chicken, and it just wasn't. Uh, it it just something don't seem right, you know. Appearance on our box was damn near excellent. Some of the one of the best boxes we turned in all season. Um, so we get the ribs. Uh, out of twenty teams, we finished nineteenth place in ribs. Um, very disheartening. 
987-977-888-977-977-987. Now, the judging isn't really sporadic on here. And if you listen to them, they're average. But the judges, I'm telling you, I don't know where in the hell they come from, what they're judging for, if they have teeth in their mouth, if they have, they smoke so much cigarettes, they don't have taste buds. I don't understand what hole in the earth that you crawled out of and showed up in Whiteville to judge barbecue. I'm sorry to be so negative, but this is really disheartening for me. And the comments that I got, Max, the comments that I hear from other teams on their scorecards confirms that this was a first year comp and must have been first year judges or first comp judges something. I'm not sure. I've had I've I've seen I've never seen half the half the judges that were there. Never. Never even seen them. Never even heard of them. And I've been to this is our thirteenth competition of the season. And I've never seen any of them before. So I don't know. They crawled out of the woodwork down there somewhere. Took a class three weeks prior and thought they were certified or what, or professional or whatever the hell you seasoned. Pork ribs were 153.0744, which is about where our average is for the season. Um, but still, I couldn't get them no more tender without falling apart. I blown them apart. And if I would have cooked them any more, they'd have been tough. So I'm at a loss. So we'll move on to pork, which we've had two top 10 calls. Our best finish was a 176 in pork. Two taste, uh, a taste and a tenderness score away from 180. And we went back to using our other injection that we used in the season. And we used um, Heath Riles rubs and the pork butts. I fixed three. The money muscles were melting in your mouth. The pieces of pork that I picked were tender, not mushy, tender. The box may have been, you know, I, I usually just use pulled and money muscle, but I actually put plugs in it. Apparently nobody <clears throat> east of the Mississippi knows what the hell a plug is. But I've learned that by watching Melissa Cookston when she puts plugs in her shoulder boxes on Barbecue Pitmasters, and she does real well with them. They were tender, juicy. The pork butts were cooked great. I couldn't cook the pork butts any better than I have all season. I thought we did. I thought we were going to get at least a top ten pork call. Not to mention we were going against some of the best teams in the United States. Did not go to the Jack Daniels because the Jack Daniels was happening that weekend. <clears throat> so twentieth place in pork, folks. Last place in pork. Never thought I'd finish last in a category. And here it is. It is disheartening. 978, 978, 977. Ha, ha, ha. 998-978-878. One judge likes pork and the rest of them didn't like the taste, didn't like the tenderness. I don't know what's wrong with you. Did you put your dentures in? Did you, you know, did you did you have too much pork? Did someone's food in front of mine kill your taste buds? I mean, did you eat dog shit? Before you got there, I don't understand. Um, again, the judges judge below their average, except for one judge, 998, judge one point above his average. Everybody was two to three points below their average, and I know our pork hasn't been. That was our worst score in pork. We have a 166 average in pork. And we have a, we have a card. Um, now here, um, here is the infamous card of terror, nine, seven, eight, nine on appearance, seven on taste. And it said bland, no flavor. Well, you know how I like this one. Wow. in the shit can something have no flavor after you inject it? Rub it, smoke it, and sauce it. How in the hell can your pork be bland? I do not understand. I am at a loss. So for you 
judge number oh shit I don't even know what judge I don't even know what judge number that is I would say 978 but we got four of those whoever wrote the comment card you eat dog shit for breakfast um because All right, never mind. A little parenting. Um, yeah. Same. I mean, you inject it, rub it, smoke it, sauce it. How I put finishing rub on it and it has no flavor. I don't know what, what groundhog you've been eating, but you can go back to eating that groundhog because you're a delusional. I'm not saying my pork is the best in the world, but I'd be damned if that pork was that bad. And um, the other co the comment uh, on tenderness was pleasant with an eight. Where is the pork f taste? Very flavorless. I don't know. What the hell you got to do? Put a clove of garlic inside of it or rosemary or something? I have no idea. Folks, I'm sorry I'm being so negative on these judges, man, but God, God. And Miss Katie was blown away just like I was. Um, on this, on this, on this stuff. And our pork score was 155.3484. That is 12, that's 11 points below our pork average for the season. I, I tell you, I didn't bomb this cook. You know, I did not bomb it at all. Um, I, I don't know what happened. I, I really do not know what happened. Um, other than, you know, going against some of the best United States, but We've been competing them all year, you know, and there's a couple teams there that I put them in the dust early in the season, mid-season, and they come down there and uh, they just walk the dog. I don't understand. So we'll move on to brisket. Now, brisket has been a strong category so far. It's been very good. We have a 165 average. We're average. We're, we're across the board. We're, we're consistent except for pork. Um, so... Out of 20 teams, we finished with a highlight of the day, 16th in brisket, with an 888, 988-977, 988-878, and here is the kicker, a 998. Consecutive slices, tender, tastes good. Hell, this is, I, I think Miss Katie even said this is one of the best briskets that We've actually cooked. Yeah, it was a really good one. It was one of the best, definitely. One of the best. It wasn't Kevin Green's double A nine Wagyu from Australia, but um, where was that one from? I don't even remember now. I'm trying to remember where it was from. I can't remember. I don't know. I don't remember. That's bad. Yeah, it is bad. Oh, it was the Snake River Farms Black River. Um, oh, that's right. That I drove and met. Uh, oh, we have a team that uh, they're Thunder Steven early, and they gave me a hell of a deal on um, the the Snake River Black um, little brisket. And that thing, I tell you what, man, that thing was good. Um, I don't know what happened. The flavor was pretty damn good. I mean, it was tender. We didn't turn bird ends in. Um, because they wasn't quite where I need them to be, and that's been the case several times this season. Um, again, the judges scored below their average. Two of them went one point above their average, and the rest of them is two, three points below their average. I don't know what expectations they're looking for in brisket, but apparently in Whitesville, Virginia, they don't know what the hell brisket tastes like. 161.6800. By far our best score of the weekend, of the comp. I don't know what happened. Um, apparently, I just don't know, man. I don't know. I have no idea. But they were consistently shitty scores, except for a couple little shining stars in there. And I just don't know. New comp, new judges. I'm not so sure we'll go back next year. I'm not even sure where our comp... Life is going to end up next year. But I do know there are some changes in the future. We are going to do some roadside barbecue 
next year in the spring and summer weekends. Maybe we might sneak in a comp or two here and there, but I think we might go a different route. Instead of doing 13 comps, we will pick big ones like money purses or we will dabble into the NBN world and with our good old friend Scott Sinet down in Galax, which uh, he's always a pleasure to see. Uh, Miss Katie enjoys the hospitality. Um, it was cool. I'm sure Katie has one of the pictures. I'll put it right here of the hospitality that he showed Miss Katie um, when we got to the hotel room. He loaded it full of stuff. We didn't need for anything except for towels. And uh, other than that, good weekend. We uh, chalked it up as a good old ass kicking. Um, like I said, we had some of the top top 10, top 30 teams in the United States were there. Uh, 270 Smokers were there. Uh, Wolf's Revenge, he's always a strong god child. I love him to death, but I mean, I like to beat his ass once or twice. Um, we have, um, hell, um, Motley Crue was there and um, Taste of Grace and Twisted Pear and all those guys. If you look in the competition on the KCBS website, they're in the top, top of, the, of everything. Um, so, you know, hey, man, you know, you win some, you lose some, but it was a hard way to go out. We're coming up on a half hour. I'm going to go ahead and we finished dead last in this competition with a 623.7484. It's a hard one to swallow. And I beat myself up all night. And all the way up the road. Just can't answer questions. I don't know what happened. Didn't, wasn't eat like eating dog shoe leather. I mean, like when you look around and people got calls, they were looking at each other like, what the hell? What happened? Like they were expecting other stuff. I was pretty confident. Usually I'm pretty negative going into awards, but I felt confident in this competition. But nope, we didn't do it. So guys, this is the last comp of the season. There won't be no more any, any more comp videos this this year, except for maybe a practice video here and there, or might do a do a tell all and chicken ribs, pork butt. You know how some of you backyard guys you want to get into it, or some of the new pro teams you want to dabble in the barbecue competition world. Plus, it makes pretty good loot on the on the channel. So you know, thanks for sticking with us all season. Those who supported us in these videos and didn't bitch about us not cooking, thank you for hanging in there. And for those that are hung in there and was bitching about cooking, we're getting ready to cook again. So we're going to make some changes on our cookers. We're going to do some changes, do some of our, you know, wintertime cooking, crock pot, and you know, other stuff like that. We'll dabble in some other stuff. So give me a chance to get regrouped and get back up on the trail. Guys, thanks for the support. Again, you can find my rubs on richesriverbbq.com, the promo code I'll leave right here. Until January 1st, I believe it is, December 31st, it goes away. So, and check out, you know, Lamb's Meat Varnish, Chris Lemon. You know, thanks for every, everything that everybody has done for us this season. A big shout out to everybody. We love you guys. And uh, we'll keep you... You know, we'll keep you informed of what's up. Sorry about the scraggly hair. I'm looking some shaggy here. A little bug in the hell. I'm looking at myself. So, guys, share with your friends and family if you dare <laughs> on this one. Share with the world. And when you do share with them, tell them the best barbecue comes from the river. And we'll see you on the next one.